All right, this is CS Trades 101, the Wolf Pack. <clears throat> so I'm actually doing a little project here for some elementary students um, on my, uh, um, for a teacher actually on my channel. Um, she, we were talking on our private Webex server and um, she, she, we started talking about gold panning and something and prospecting. So as most people on the channel know that um, I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia um, on the outskirts in a place called Mission. Okay, so I'm up literally a couple kilometers from the Fraser River. Well, the Fraser River back years and years and years, hundreds of years ago, um, it started the gold. There's a couple different, a uh, couple different takes on the gold rush. When I say takes, I means that there was a couple eras where it went into a gold rush. Um, there was in the 1800s and the 19, and they made gold uh, illegal in some parts uh, to have it. Okay, so we're not going to get that much into the history of that aspect of it. But um, so the teacher that um, we're covering that is um, Beth Bell, Miss Bell. So this is for your students, your elementary kids. Um, so I told you that I'd do this little project. So we're going to get into some stuff and hopefully it's not to the, the questions that they asked are, wow, are, are you sure they're in elementary school? Because I, I wish I, I was covering this stuff when I was in school. Um, I just wanted to tell you. Um, all that uh, the, the, the kids that I'm speaking to, you're very lucky to have a teacher like this because I never got to do anything fun like this in school. So um, I just wanted to say that um, I'm really great, grateful for um, you reaching out and sending me these questions and uh, hopefully you like it. So let's jump on in. So um, some of the questions are, when did you first start searching for gold? Actually, I started searching for gold back when I was probably... Um, I'd say about eight years old, nine years old. Um, it all started from my grandfather. Um, he's not with me anymore, but um, I did learn a lot. So when I was younger, he had an office just like what I'm in right now. And he had vials of gold sitting around like this. This is, uh, this is black sand and gold. Um, it is not extracted. It's not taken apart yet. There's, it's mixed with gold inside of it. You can see it in there. Um, there's a separation process, um, and this is with water, and this has gold flakes in it. I don't, I don't know if you can see. It's black sand and gold mixed in there. Uh, you can see a couple sparkles. So we'll get into, um, we'll get into some questions here. So there's a couple questions of what does gold um, look like and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> do you have to rent or buy a piece of land to look for gold? Actually, there's spots on the Fraser River where I live that you can actually go and pan. They do still have a thing called staking a claim. So you have to have a free miner's license. Um, and I got one here. Um, I just, I, I should have brought it out ahead of time. But what it is, is a piece of paper you, uh, um, it's not when I say free miner's license, it's not free, you actually have to pay for it. Back in the day, you did not have to pay for it. Okay, so um, it's not much. I think it's like 20 bucks or 50, 25 bucks, 50 bucks. I, I don't, I can't remember the price of it. It's really cheap. So what it does is it just registers you as a prospector, but it gives you some rights to some stuff like uh being able to go and stake a claim okay all stakes are registered through the minerals um deposit uh of the federal government in canada so the question that you asked do you have to rent land you can make a deal with somebody that owns a claim you can buy claims okay they're for thousands of dollars hundreds of dollars you can buy them they're always there's places you can go like on facebook groups um stuff like that so it's a legal binding contract. Um, you can purchase it. But what I do before doing any of that stuff, I go um, ask them if I can contact the person that's selling it. Ask them if you can go do some test pans. So when I say test pans, you take your gold pan out there and you, uh, you test. You test the soil. You want to see what the content is before you purchase it. Because there's a lot of lands, pieces of land or claims that have been worked over really good so when i say worked over they've already it's it has no gold in it okay or the gold's too hard to get or the gold is too deep and you can't take machinery in there to to dig it up and extract it because the fisheries and all that there's um laws there's a lot of strict laws in canada and every year they implement new ones okay it protects the fish and wildlife and the environment okay because gold panning or not panning itself but sluicing or anything like that um hydro hydro washing hydro vacuuming, anything like that running these pumps messes with with the salmon and the fisheries the spawning 
Um, it's really bad for the environment. What it leaves is this uh, silt, which is the leftover um, deposits. Uh, and it makes like, it's the same as in a, a mud puddle. It's all clear. And then you move it around and it all goes muddy. Well, that's what it is. Um, that is an actual, um, <clears throat> that is an actual part of um, wrecking the environment. Okay. It's leaving um, a footprint behind. Um, and that's what a lot of prospectors, the older type did. Um, they just left all these barrels of uh, chemicals for extracting um, uh, food cans, just left them everywhere. I found them in the bush, all rusted cans. And it's, it's kind of neat looking for uh, finding that stuff. You'll see, oh, I've never seen a can like this, an old can of ketchup or something like that, that you never even heard of. That's like a hundred years old and you can just barely read the label on it. Um, or you'll find, you'll come across, there's a lot of old abandoned mines here or like uh, shelves they're called with land um, over the top. And you go underneath um, and there's where people would sit and make a fire and get out of the, the elements. When I say elements, rain and stuff. So I'm going to get, this is a little, probably a little bit longer, but I kind of wanted to make this like an, uh, a half an hour, 45 minutes for you guys. So you really got understanding of this. Okay. Instead of just answering some questions and that's it. Okay. So the next question, where do I, where do I do my gold mining? Okay, my my prospecting gold mining. Uh, prospecting means that it's usually uh, you're you're digging, uh, you're prospecting the dirt out. Okay, and you're looking for a place. It's just what they call it the older days. But gold gold mining is when you say gold mining, I think of it as gold mining, like an open pit mine with big machines and stuff like that. So <clears throat> prospecting is the term I use. Um, where do I do it? I do it in places where I'm allowed to. If you get caught, it's called claim jumping, okay? And it is prosecuted by law. You can get charged, okay? Um, they do stand behind some of those laws that have not been changed up in um, this part of the world that I'm in. Um, so they're very strict. Some of the laws have not changed. Some have. So I usually go to the Fraser River down the road. I go up to a place called Lillooet, Yale, Spasm. I know these names mean nothing probably to you guys, but if you want to Google it, um, if your teacher wants to pull it up on Google Earth, those names I mentioned, she can just find Vancouver, New Westminster, and follow the river all the way up past Mission, where I am. And then it goes all the way up and it goes to a place called Hope, BC. Okay. And then it diverts the, 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 there's a, a stream that diverts left and there's one that goes the other way. You want to go left up Highway 97. And then you head into the Rockies, the Alpine country. So, and that's where I'm going to take you live right now in a couple minutes. We're going to get, we're going to go on an adventure. I'm going to take you on an adventure. We're going to go pretend. I just want you to clear your imaginations and pretend I'm going to take you prospecting. We're going to, in today's time, we're going to follow these gentlemen live into, um, into the mountains. And um, these gentlemen, we're just going to watch their video and just pretend that you're there. Everything that they're showing you is a hundred percent true in this day and time. Okay. What is my daily schedule? Early, wake up really early, usually when it's pitch black out. But the rule I don't do is when it's dark out, I do not exit my truck, okay? Or my car, my means of transportation. It is very, this answers a couple questions. It's very dangerous, okay? You can fall down a, a ravine you go, uh, or a crevice. You call them crevasse, right? Same thing, that's just a Canadian lingo, changeover. Um, so you can actually poke your eyes out with a stick, uh, tree branch, even especially if you're walking behind somebody. Um, I know all this stuff because I'm doing this my whole life. Okay. This is what I do as a hobby. That also answers another one of your questions. Um, Full-time gold panning and prospecting with, with the sluice and just the smaller uh, operation um, isn't that profitable. It's more of a hobby. And I got some tools here that I'm going to show you guys. Okay. Um, so that answers that one. How late do I stay out mining? I go home when it's just getting dark. So I, I assess the situation because you have to remember that you're you that where I usually go, you got mountains on each side. When the sun goes down, you got about 20 minutes, half an hour, and it's going to be pitch black. So you just learn this stuff as you go. Um, you don't want to be caught down somewhere. And if it definitely starts to rain, you get out of there. First, you assess the situation and then get out of there. Because if it starts raining, usually... Where I am, it's really dry and slippery, and they, they, they get this moss on the rocks. And once it gets wet, it's slippery. It's easy to break your leg. I always take a first aid kit with me. And I usually, or I, not usually, I always take another person with me. Okay? So if you guys go out and girls go out, you take somebody with you always. And you always tell them where you're going. Print a Google map off, mark the spot, 
and just tell them if I'm not back by this time to send somebody out to look for me. That's the number one mistake that happens worldwide. Okay. I'm very strong and I believe that I will not go out with somebody that is not, that, that does that stuff. Now they have a thing called the GPS. Uh, you probably know about it on the cell phone. I look up the area and I give the person the GPS coordinates, write it down. You can print it out on a piece of paper or write it down. And that's where I am. So what kind of, what tools do I need? Okay. The tools that I take with me are first aid kit, GPS, which is my phone usually. Okay. Some forms of communication. There is no cell service where I am, but GPS still works sporadically. When I say sporadically, because I'm in the mountains, the GPS, the, the satellite has to go over top of me to get the signal. Right. But it eventually does. Um, there's multiple satellites that have that um, feature. So um, and the other tools I need um, are I take a pickaxe. It's an um, axe with a blade on each side. Um, the firemen use them. Okay, that's but I use a smaller one, sometimes the bigger one. What that is to big dig big rocks out and stuff like that to get underneath. Gold usually, not, not always, but usually is not sitting on the top. Gold is very, very heavy. Okay, it's literally seven times plus heavier than the average rock. You heard me correctly. It falls. So over time, it works itself and it, it usually goes down into a thing called bedrock. Okay, bedrock um, in the Fraser River is about, depends on the area, is about 15, 10, 15 to 30 feet deep. Okay, um, depends on where you are. Okay, and there's some tricks that I'll talk about to find gold on it so you're not digging. But a lot of people spend a lot of time digging. You might as well get used to digging. Um, and you always fill your holes in once you dig because um, the person that behind you or whatever coming along, maybe ne on the next trip or you even might forget that that underneath that water, because I'll show you the Fraser River is all muddy. You can't see you'll fall into the hole and break your leg. OK, so you always try to fill in what you left behind. OK, so um, what axe, what tools do I need? I already explained that gold pan, uh, pickaxe and a rock hammer. A rock hammer has, it's just a little, it's just a smaller base. I don't have one here. Um, your teacher can actually look it up um, and show you guys um, on that. But now you know what the name is. How much does a gold pan cost? Okay, a gold pan could be, you guys, um, you, have a, you must have a Cabela's or something like that. You can get one there. Um, the older ones I used to use are steel gold pans. So uh, what I do, and this is a trick. With a steel gold pan, it looks all nice and shiny. What I do is I dent it. I, I, I put little dents in the bottom. I flip it over. So the pan's down. It's not the bowl up. I flip it up and I'll put dents all the way around the outside edge with a hammer. Like little dents, not lots. Divots I make, okay? Then I throw it in the fire and let it sit till it glows red hot, okay? Then I let it cool down and then I take it to a stream and I let it get all rusty. And you guys are thinking, why would you wreck a perfectly gold pan? These are the tricks you need to know. Okay. So gold needs, it gathers in divots and ridges. Okay. So um, on a gold pan, a steel one, it doesn't have these ridges, these rifts. Okay. The plastic ones do. I would recommend a plastic one. Um, and there's different sizes. They come uh, it's really small as like uh, 14, 12. And this is by feet um, uh, or inches. Yeah. 12, 14 inch, 12 inch. Um, there's obviously a conversion because we're on metric, you're on Imperial. Okay. So your teacher can explain all that to you. Um, do you have to dig deep to find gold nuggets? Nuggets. I like that word nuggets. Usually you find gold flakes, my friends. Um, nuggets would be awesome. Um, very few. Well, I shouldn't say very few people. A lot of people find nuggets, but they're usually the size of your pinky fingernail. And that's a big one. Okay. Um, usually it's flakes. Um, like I said, to do, you have to get down to bedrock to find the good stuff. Okay. So what it usually is, is um, it's um, organic matter, which is just leaves and mud. Just simple stuff. And then if you've ever dug a hole before, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's about this deep, maybe a little bit deeper. Depends on where you are in the world. Okay. You have to remember I'm up in the Rockies. So you'll get this plant matter, this organic matter. You get rid of that. And then you're going to start hitting a sand. Okay. It's called black sand. Okay. And that is... Uh, <clears throat> black sand is, um, and it has fool's gold, fake gold in it. You'll think it's gold in the sun and it's not because what did I say before? Gold is seven up to seven times plus heavier than this stuff. So in your gold pan, when you're, 
when you're uh, when you're moving the water around, okay, in a circular motion, the lighter stuff will pick up with the water and move. The gold will left behind. That's those divots I told you about that I made in the pan. The divots is where the gold lays because gold lays to, goes to the the spot. And I'm going to show you how to look for gold. And this is a hundred percent true. Okay, these are the old, old, old ways. And I'll get into that in a minute. Do you find gold on land and water? Both. Gold is in water, and as you mean in the stream, and there's dry panning. Dry panning is um, is when, and usually water is used eventually, is when you bust it up like a big rock. You can just take a rock and crush it down into dust, okay? And there's machines for that, or you can just do it by hand. Um, and it's a lot of people just dry panning, okay? Or you, and, um, or you can just pan it dry. There's different ways to do it. I'm not going to get into that because it's a bit of a process. But um, they use the water as an, um, a tool to help you extract it, okay? So there is both, yes. And a lot of people um, up in this area too, up in a place called Cache Creek, it's up even further. They will go up in the mountainsides and because the river has dropped over the years, it keeps on eroding away the, 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 the rock and it keeps on dropping lower and lower and lower and that's how gold gets deposited. It eats the rock over millions of years, this water. Water is very abrasive. Okay, so um, how does how long how long does it take to find gold? Wow, it could take your whole life, and I mean that like not just gold dust, but that depends on where you are. That's why we do this test panning, and the big companies use a core sample. They drill into the ground and pull these. Uh, it's called a core. It's a cylinder um, piece of rock. Out. What it does is it drills down, and then they pull it out. And then, sorry if you hear hacking. It's my dog is sick right now. So he, he has a cold. That's what you can hear in the background. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, are gold nuggets rare? Yes, they are. Okay. The hardest part of mining is the back. Back and legs sitting and hunched over and constantly. That's all you do. A lot of these miners have back issues and their hands become numb from the cold water. They get a thing called nerve damage. Um, so now that a lot of uh, like what I use is a thermal glove. It's a rubber thermal glove that I put on because you're always sifting through and pulling the big rocks out of your gold pan and throwing them out and then just getting down to the small stuff and sift, sifting it back and forth. Okay. On, on a circular motion. I just wish I had a pan here cause I'd show you, but these guys on this video, um, this is going to be long guys, but and ladies, but um, it's all good because we're already 17, 30 minutes into it. But it's, it's going to be a good video. This is probably one of the most educa educational videos out there, okay? Because I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this stuff. Um, our, okay, what is the biggest gold nugget you found? Oh, probably about the size of uh, my thumb nail. Um, and the, probably the next one's how much is it worth? Yeah, the next one is how much it's worth. That, probably a couple hundred bucks. But depends on the nugget and the shape. If it looks, and that depends on the price of gold too. Okay, the price of gold is really high right now. And what the nugget looks like, how many impurities are in it? When I say impurities, I mean, does it have sand all in it? Because you have to remember the gold was melted at one time. Okay, when the world was all volcanic, this was all volcanic area. Okay, when it was forming, the world was coming up and it was pushing all these mountains up and the water was eating through this stuff. The water eats through certain ways and, and rips off chunks. It's called a gold vein. It's a big, big vein of gold that runs through. Um, and some people find it, right? So that's what they want to look for is this gold vein. That's what these prospectors look for. That's what I look for. So usually if you find flake, 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 the, if, you, if you're on the right track, the flakes will get bigger and bigger and bigger until you get to that vein. A lot of people never find the vein though. They spend their whole lives sometimes. Um, gold panning is not that lucrative of business. Um, uh, sluicing is a little bit better. Um, some people can get... Um, a quarter ounce to an ounce a day if they're in a, uh, uh, sorry, correction on that, a quarter ounce maybe in a day, maybe a week doing it, maybe an ounce. It depends on where you are. And a lot of people don't talk about the gold they find. Okay. And there's a reason for that because you'll get lots of people going there and taking it. Okay. So a lot of people don't uh, brag, oh, I found it, or they'll never talk about the area. The rule of thumb here is if you do find gold, you tell them somewhere totally different, right? So um, or else every, you'll have everybody in there, especially if you make a YouTube video like I'm doing. 
Okay, how many pounds of gold did you find each day? If I was finding pounds of gold, that is 446 grams, 454 grams. So like I said, we're on a different system than you guys. A pound is a lot. Okay, uh, uh, an ounce of gold, I depends on the purity. I think we're up to $2,000. I, I would have to look. It changes all the time. So I, I would have to 16 ounces to a pound. So 16 times 2,000, that would be 20, 30, 30, 40, 50 grand, somewhere around there, give or take. I'm, I'm just doing this out of my head. So I'm probably off quite a bit, but roughly. And that depends on the purity, right? Remember what I was telling you about? What if it has a bunch of rock in it? And that's called lower grade gold, okay? Um, but these are awesome questions. How much money do you make from hunting for gold? That depends. Um, it could be nothing a day and just getting the gas money and the time and, and the tools. Cause you do break tools sometimes too. Um, it's usually not lucrative to go. It's a hobby. You just make it as fun, right? You got to put that mindset in that frame of mind. Um, if you know what that means there, um, what I'm talking about, um, it just as a fun day, right? So just remember to be safe when you guys are doing it. Oh, and the bears and the cougars up here. You have to watch out for cougars. That's the number one. The bears I'm not worried about. I've run into bears all the time, especially there. They're black bears. Uh, they just run usually from humans. It's the grizzly bears. They're not there. They're up higher in the mountains, way up high. Um, and yes, I do go gold panning up there too. So um, that, um, if you want to go up there, you carry a firearm with you, a gun. Um, and that's what most of the prospectors, they will have a gun on them. Okay. For the cougars mostly a cougar is the worst enemy you'll be down panning for gold and he'll sneak up behind you and jump on you or they sit up in trees they'll they'll stalk you for if somebody's camping there for like a week they come in and they'll wait for days for you up in a tree and just uh just uh i'm not trying to scare you guys but this is the truth you wanted something very truth on this they 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 stalk you they stalk their prey and you don't even know if they're there half the time. They're so quiet and they're very, that's what they do, right? So I'm just saying that that is in rare cases, but yes, they do um, have a lot of that happening. Um, people getting killed by cougars is very rare, but getting attacked is pretty common, especially if you're, that's why you go with a lot of people, a group of people. Okay, so do, 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 do you sell gold that you find? Yes, I do. Um, there's places you can sell it. Um, there's uh, gold, uh, gold uh, places, gold smithing companies. Um, gold places like pawn shops depends on the purity again. Usually the gold that I get, I will smelt it. It's melting, but it's actually called smelting. Um, what you do and you lose a lot because of those impurities that are in it. Um, it actually makes it cooks it down to nothing. And if you cook gold too hot, it just, poof, it just vaporizes. It just disappears into smoke. Okay. Um, gold is very soft. So there's a technique to that. Okay. A lot of people don't know this stuff. They end up ruining the gold. Okay. At the end of the day, do you come home richer or poorer? Poorer usually. Okay. Remember it's fun um, because the gas price of gas is really expensive right now. And that's if you don't break anything on your truck or tools or anything like that, but it's just for fun. You got to have that mindset. Okay. That's why us, we got us guys do the gold seekers. Do you know any other gold seekers? Yes, I do. They're all over Facebook and that's what I recommend doing, but make sure you have your parents with you um, and wait until you're older, obviously. But if your parents want to take you out to do this kind of stuff, there's groups on Facebook, okay, that you can just look in the Facebook, put it in the search engine. I would let your adults do that though, um, your parents, okay, or whoever you're living with or your teacher or whatever, if you're going to go out with as a team as a field trip, um, I would um, definitely get them to look that up in Facebook just because there's a lot of misleading stuff and there's danger out there. You guys know that as kids, okay? Don't trust anybody, okay, except your parents or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, do you only hunt for gold? Um, that's funny. Uh, gold and silver, whatever, platinum, platinum's worth more than gold. And that's a whole different story. We're not going to get into that because there's a whole bunch of techniques to use for platinum, but I got one tool here that I'm going to show you. This is my, this is my, uh, my little, it's called the gold buddy. This machine runs off of, uh, 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 quartz. I don't know if you know what a quartz is. Your teacher can pull it up on a, a, a slide or something, or just show you on a phone or a tablet or something. I don't know what you guys have or a computer, a piece of quartz crystal. Okay. It's an actual crystal and this thing runs off of it. So the quartz crystal reacts with and finds gold. It sets off a, a vibration of a frequency. And this is called the gold bug too. And this is a state of the art system. This is what they did not have back then. The lot of the machines they used, um, 
uh, big sluice boxes. They left a lot of stuff behind. That's what we go get because back then they didn't have the technology or or the or the smarts, the, the brain power, or the because they were behind in time, hundred years or whatever plus. So this thing you, that runs off frequencies it <clears throat> makes a beep sound beep when you hit gold. But you can fine tune this because it can go off if you hit metal, like a can or a cap, like a um, a little soda can or a little tab or something like that. So it's called trash. And you, there's a trash setting on here. You can actually, when you, I, I, what I do is I have a nice gold nugget. I have a nice gold nugget pen, pen, pen. Uh, I, oh, I should have brought that in. Um, I can't pause this. I actually have a huge gold nugget that I wear on my chain. Um, I should have brought that in. Um, what I will do is maybe amend a picture to it. And if not, it doesn't matter. You guys have seen probably lots of gold nuggets in your books. So what I do is I put my ring down or my nugget on the ground and I'll set it to this thing, right? So it, I have it set to gold and it runs off of, uh, there's a whole bunch of settings. I'm not going to get into that, um, but it also has a setting for headphones. Plug it right here, right? There you go. The headphones go right in there, headphone jack. See, right in there. Right. And then you can plug it in. And that's the other dangerous part of this is danger with, of animals and stuff like that. You are not listening to the stuff around you. That's why it's good to have somebody with you. Okay. That can hear. And the other thing is falling rocks coming down off the mountains. That's another danger. Okay. You can't hear that stuff. Bang, bang, the rocks coming down. A lot of people have been killed and, and knocked into the river and drowned because of the falling rocks. Okay. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to scare anybody here when I'm saying that the, the, the dangers of it, you guys asked and you're old enough to know this stuff. Okay. I just want you to be very, very safe. Gold prospecting is very dangerous if you do not take it seriously. Okay. You can't be running around and, and doing all that kind of stuff. You have to walk slowly and pay attention to everything around you. Okay. And if you're walking into an area you've never been in before, what I do is take some, uh, that marker tape, um, it's used for surveying and I tie it onto branches as I go in, in segments. So on the way out, I know my path back to my vehicle. Okay. It's all about you. It's all about thinking. Okay. My friends. So we're going to try playing this video. I don't know if I can do this, but if not, this has been a pretty good presentation. So we'll put this up over here and we're going to try a screen share. Yes, it's going to work. Good. Okay. So we're going to play this here for you. All right, everyone. We made it down to the river and it's looking pretty good. I must say, I am pretty excited. Lots of heavy, heavy, heavy flying around. That's the Fraser River, guys and ladies. Some sand in between, but these Kids. are heavy stones. I think we're just going to go in the first spot right now. There's a nice pile in here. Look at these. Look at this. These are heavies. We're going to go get right in here, probably. J-Man likes this little pocket. Very nice. Let's see how we do. There you go. There's the work starts. See what they're doing? They're putting in a pan. That's a sifting screen. See that screen that they both have? That gets rid of the big rocks. There's literally like clay, like molding clay. There's gold. In there. It's going to be trapped in here. Look at this. This is nuts. It's not easy work. See the back-breaking work that I was telling you about? All right, everyone. I got my first pan here. I can't believe how clay-like this is. This stuff is. Remember I said your hands freeze from the cold water? Okay, it's pretty broken up now. And that's a that's a the steel pan. See, See how it's all rusty, what I was talking about? See those rivets around the edge, how it's all has a, like a ridge? That's where the gold traps in. I know more than these guys do. That's why I'm narrating this for you guys. See how I said he's washing it? See? Not really much to pick up here. See that sand? See the black sand? The same stuff I was showing you guys? There it is right there. Test pans? Remember I mentioned that before? Not finding too much. It's a substantial value. So uh we're actually gonna move along and hike down to the end of the clam and then we'll work our way. Remember what I said that they do test pans first and I haven't watched this yet. Just so you guys know, I just watched fractional pieces of it, like chat sections to know that there was no, that the language was good and, and the people were respectable. Um, so the test panning, it's not a good spot. They didn't find anything. So I'm not saying you're going to find big nuggets, but if you find little specks, 
depends on the amount you find. There's gold there. It, there's not that, it, it, I'd say about 80% of the places you go even higher don't have gold. Okay. So, um, and there's certain places to look. You want to look behind the rocks in the big rocks where the water goes. What I do is in a stream, not this size, I will put a piece of paper and I always clean up my trash when I do that, like a piece of paper. That's why I use paper because if it gets away down the stream, it's biodegradable. It don't put plastic or anything in there. I put a, go upstream and I put a piece of paper. Wherever that paper goes and if it gets stuck behind a rock and it goes like that, that's where the gold is. Okay, that's the trick. This is old tricks that these guys don't even know. Okay, I know this stuff from my grandfather. Back of a box you thought looked cool. <laughs> See how the rocks are all round? That looks like jade. Okay, that looks a piece of jade. So um, it's all round from the uh, the river, washing it. These were big pieces up in these mountains before. I see. I'm glad this cursor works here. See what I'm saying? He's trying to get down deep. This. See, he's behind rocks looking for it. Nothing but fine, 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 specky poo so far. I call that I mean, pa flower down. gold. Like, you know, specks. A couple more specks than I had this morning. <laughs> so he's getting closer. <laughs> I don't know, but these guys are having fun. See what I said? It's just fun. That's all these older guys are doing is having fun. Here. Let's see what we got. Lot less sand. See, um, I don't agree on the way that they're doing this. Um, their surface, you got to get deeper. That's why they're not finding anything. Remember, I said gold is heavy, um, seven times plus heavier. It's not going to be on the surface. Well, I shouldn't say not because you, they found big nuggets on the surface, but it's highly unlikely. Gold is um, deep. Okay, deeper. Remember, I said down deep. I'd at least go four, uh, three or four or five feet at least before I started test panning. That's why they're not finding anything because I know I know there's gold there. No more gravels. Spicy. I'm just gonna jump ahead of here. Oh. What do we got here? <laughs> some garbage that people didn't catch. They so you find garbage all the time underneath somebody's shirt or something. So a few specks in that pan, but that was just the overburden. So I'd get down to the weeds. Uh, Over here just took overburden. He's talking about the the stuff that's on the top. Remember, I was talking about see the trees, how all the stuff falls down, all this stuff in the background. That's what he's talking overburden. Um, the um, the stuff from the trees, the leaves. It's uh. All that organic material okay so i'm just going to jump a little bit further here here there we go there's some specks of gold all right guys we're going to check up on j-man here he's got himself a little spot it's probably behind a big rock see how deep they're getting that's why they're finding specks they got to get deeper see there's a plastic pan that i was telling you about so any sporting goods shop you can pick that stuff up and you asked me a price probably about 20 bucks plus for a, a decent one you want to make sure it doesn't bend when you go like this if it bends like this it's it's not worth buying of course you're not going to reef on it like that hard but i'm talking like if it's like a milk right, guys, jug it's too soft ever, oh there's a piece of flower gold all right Oh, he's rich. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. He's not. I just want to remind everyone, okay? Some people diss the gold they find. Just getting out there, finding gold is special. Not everyone does this, all right? So you're out there, you're finding specs, you're doing it. Your own two feet brought you there. Your own back got broken doing it. You're finding shiny. Let's keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> I like these guys. They're really funny. Yeah, backbreaking work. Oh, there's the famous guys. These are the famous uh, guys up north there um, on TV there. So um, that's funny. I've seen that. But there's a gold pan too. He's just showing that that's actually good that he put that in there. That's the size of a hat. So I'd say that it's about a four, uh, uh, 12, 12 inch to 14 inch pan. Okay. See the rivets? 
That's where the gold is when you're washing it out, the rocks. Um, I'm not going to get into any techniques on that stuff. I just wish you guys lived closer. You could actually, we could, you could do a field trip. Um, and because I'm way far from you guys, um, that I could take you out to the Fraser river, um, and, uh, take you and your teacher out there on a field trip. And I could actually show each one of you how to pan. And yes, you would find some gold, um, not big nuggets because you'd have to go way up in the mountains for that stuff. But to basically just down the road from my house, you'll find some specs. You might even have to have a microscope or a, a magnifying glass to see it. Okay. So that is pretty much it. I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm just going to pull this restream thing off of here. Oops. Still getting used to the software. Okay. So hopefully you enjoyed my video and I'm just make sure that I answered all the questions. And I just wanted to say that, uh, um, your teacher, um, Miss Bell, um, is, I cannot believe she did. This is pretty neat. And so hopefully I answered all your questions. If I did miss one or two, I'm sorry, but I did make it up with the video with the live footage because, um, not that many people get to see where I live. Um, so yeah. And, um, if you guys ever come to Vancouver, British Columbia, um, and if you're, if you're going on vacation or anything, just your teacher knows how to get a hold of me and I will take you out to a spot if you're with your parents and stuff. Um, yeah, we could go out gold panning. I do it. Um, uh, I try to get out as much as I can, but it's all weather permitting. Okay. I don't go out. I'm getting older now, so I don't go out when it's pouring rain because it's no fun. Um, so I just wanted to say that. And plus I'm into, I'm a YouTuber myself. That's what I do full time. Um, so I don't have a lot of time, but this year I'm going to make a, some time. So if I do get anything else, um, I'll shoot it with GoPro, um, out there, some actual footage and I will send you guys some stuff or I'll post it on my YouTube channel. But, um, I just want to tell you guys, uh, my YouTube channel is an adult content only. So your teacher will not reveal what the channel's called. Okay. I hope she doesn't. So, um, just because you guys, um, you ladies and gentlemen need to be a little bit older because I'm dealing with stock market stuff and it's just guy, it's just adult stuff. So thank you very much. And it was nice talking to you and, um, hopefully you enjoy the content. Bye.